Hey, what's going on guys? Dignal here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the effects that you have just seen on screen. Uh, depending on which software you're on, there are going to be timestamps on the bar below. Uh, so if you're on Vegas Pro, you're going to be first up, uh, then I'm going to do After Effects, and lastly, I'm going to do Premiere Pro. Uh, before we get into that, however, I would like to remind you guys to please like and subscribe, as it really does mean the world to me, and it does help support me and the channel. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the first tutorial. Alright, we are now in Vegas Pro. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously just import your clip. I'm going to go ahead and trim it here just a bit. Uh, but once you've done that, hopefully you've already got that ready. Uh, just go ahead and follow these steps. So just go into your video effects tab up here and search for Twixter. Uh, it is an external plugin, uh, so make sure you have that installed. Uh, before you actually start with the tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust my camera a bit. I think that's better. Uh, anyway, we have Twixter right here. Just going to apply Twixter Pro onto the clip. And uh, just go ahead and go to roughly where the uh, the camera or the sniper just stops zooming out. Because if you start the Twixter while it's zooming out, it's going to get a whole... It's just motion vectors and it's just going to not look good. Uh, so once you're out of it, just go ahead and uh, keyframe your speed. Add a keyframe right there. Uh, then you're going to want to go to where the snipe shot hits, which is going to be right here, and set this to be 10. Uh, now, obviously, this is going to boost up where the actual uh, impact is because you have just, you know, uh, decreased the speed. Uh, so let's go ahead and see roughly how long we want it to be. It's going to go ahead. It's going to be like that long, I think. So let's go ahead and add a keyframe there. We're going to go ahead and go up five frames. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and just recount that so we're on 32 so 37 and then just go ahead and turn up the speed percentage to when the shot hits and if it hits before uh you can get the speed percentage to 300 just set it to 300 because if you have it on anything less than that the impact is going to look very weak and that is not something you want uh generally so uh, i'm just gonna go ahead and pre-render this and we'll see if it looks uh any good uh we got about a second left, hopefully, right here. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, once you've got that, just go ahead and mute the audio. Uh, select the entire thing, render as, and then just select any option you want, really. And then we're going to do Twixter vid uh, tutorial hashtag 2, just like that. Uh, the reason we're actually rendering is so that we can actually split the clip. Uh, now, if you've been editing on Vegas for a while, you might know that if you apply Twixter to a clip and you try and split it, it's going to bug out. It's going to completely change the values of everything. It's going to add some red and blue frames, and it's just not a good thing for anyone. Uh, so what we're doing is we're applying the Twixter and then we're rendering the video. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to delete this part and we're going to Im import the rendered video. And that way we have sort of a base video with, uh, you know, no Twixter uh, that we can actually split and, you know, work with without having to worry about any, uh, any keyframes or anything like that fucking up. Uh, we can also, you know, add some beat shakes midway through and we can actually use presets for that instead of having to, you know, manually add those. Uh, there appears to be roughly 30 frames or 30 seconds left of this render, so I'll see you guys when that is done. Alright guys, the video is now done, and what we're going to go ahead and do is just delete this video track completely. We're going to Control shift q to add another one, and then we're going to go ahead and import the, uh, the, the video that we have just rendered. Uh, just make sure to just delete the, uh, the new uh, soundtrack because it will be empty. And now we have this fully functional video with no twixter or anything like that, and uh, we should be good to go. Alright, now once you have split it three frames back, you're going to want to go ahead and click on the FX tool and download the preset that is in the, the description. Just go ahead and import it using Preset Manager and it'll look something like this. Let's go ahead and apply that and let's pre-render that. Uh, obviously, all of these presets will be in my edit pack, not just the one that I have chosen to give away for free today. Uh, so if you're interested in anything like that, uh, I am going to be releasing a video about my edit pack in roughly, you know, a couple days. Uh, so please do consider copying it. It'll be for uh, every software. It'll be for Vegas, uh, Premiere, After Effects, Filmora, and DaVinci. I have paid people to convert my presets to all of those softwares. 
Uh, so yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's get on with the tutorial, honestly. Uh, so now that we have that, should be fine. That's obviously you know it, it's decent. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is show the actual uh, transition that you saw. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just import a random clip. Let's uh, do that. It's got to be underneath. Uh, so make sure that it is underneath. Let's go ahead and just make sure that the uh, uh, that the timing is good. So it should be something like that, and that is fine. Uh, now what you're going to want to go ahead and do is just left click on this hamburger icon and click on track motion. Uh, you're then going to want to go to the first place where this overlaps. You can change the timings of these later, uh, but go to the first place where it overlaps. Make sure there's some room here at least and make a keyframe. Uh, what you're then going to want to go ahead and do is just go to the very last frame here. Uh, or actually go one frame back from the very last. You can actually see what the fuck you're doing. And uh, then you're just going to go ahead and drag that down and make sure that they are, you know, lined up. You can actually, uh, you don't actually need to look at these. You can just make sure that they're lined up using uh, these dots right here. So just drag it all the way down. Uh, you're then going to want to enlarge it a bit, just like that. And drag it even more down, drag it like that. And now you're going to want to go ahead and rotate it. Uh, so I'd recommend rotating it to, but it doesn't matter what you rotate it as, as long as it, you know, works. Uh, set this to fast, and now we're gonna see if the, if that worked. Alright, I'm thinking we should have set it to slow there, honestly. Let's go ahead and set it to slow and see if that, uh, is an improvement. That is definitely improvement, you should set it to slow. So, uh, essentially, you can go ahead and just play around with these keyframes, you know, you can try uh, dragging it up, dragging it down, uh, you can try doing whatever, pretty much, uh, but that is how you do that, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this tutorial, I'm gonna move on with the After Effects tutorial, uh, but yeah, thank you guys for stopping by. Alright, let's get started with the After Effects part of this tutorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and just import our clip. I've gone ahead and trimmed it a bit uh, What we're gonna go ahead and do is just go to roughly where the sniper stops zooming out uh, You know it, it does tend to happen and if you add twixter to this Specific segment it tends to look like a big bowl of soup uh, So we're gonna try and ignore that and we're gonna go to the first frame where the sniper stops moving uh, all right, once you've added your twitch to go ahead and correct your frame rate, I've set mine to 59.94, so just make sure that you know what frame rate your clip is in. Uh, now, just go to, you know, where the sniper stops moving out, you're going to want to keyframe it uh, right there. So, uh, make sure you keyframe it, and then go to where the impact happens, which is right here, and set it to 10. Uh, now, just go, you know, a bit forward, like here, and uh, yeah, add another keyframe. And go five frames forward, one, two, three, four, five, and set it to whatever it needs to, you know, get uh, blue. Uh, if it's less than 300, just go ahead and set it to 300 because otherwise the impact will not be heavy enough and it'll look a bit awkward. Uh, so just go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, go two frames forward and set it to 50. So we have this right now, which is always great. Uh, now, once you've got this, just go ahead and make an adjustment layer and add your shake on to this. I'm going to go ahead and make sort of a um, sort of a filler impact, I'd say. Uh, obviously, I don't really, uh, I, 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 I'm not really here to give away free presets, obviously. Uh, also, I don't actually have any free presets for, um, what's it called? Uh, for uh, After Effects because I am not. I, I don't use After Effects that much. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add that, I guess. Uh, you, Twitchster. D d just add like an impact that you have. Uh, and, you know, preferably one that looks like, you know, good. Uh, but obviously it doesn't have to look good. It could, it could look shit as well. I mean, I don't know. All right. This should be good. Uh, so we have this. Uh, let's go ahead and just drag that out a bit so obviously uh this looks decent i'd say uh so just make sure that you have that looks decent uh you can go ahead and just mess around with the audio later that's not too important right now and i'm sure that you can figure that stuff out on your own 
so once you've got that, I'm going to go ahead and import my second clip, uh, which is just going to be like right uh, here. Uh, so let's go ahead and wait for that to get imported. Uh, once you've got this, just go ahead and drag it underneath the, uh, the clip that you were currently using. So it'll be right there. I'm not going to bother to split it, uh, cause we don't really need to. Uh, but what we need to do now is go to roughly like, uh, 30 frames into, or 20 frames into this clip, I'd say. Let's go ahead and extend that to like three. So let's go here. So we have 40 frames. And now we're going to go ahead and adjust our uh, our transform. So we're going to go ahead and position the scale, position, and rotation there. We're going to go ahead and keyframe all of those. And we're going to go to the frame before the last. And we're going to go ahead and just uh, zoom out a bit here. Just go to the hand tool, make sure everything uh, is visible. And then we're going to drag this down. Uh, just make sure you have that selected. Drag that down. Uh, completely just make sure that it's underneath you know visibility uh, you're going to change the rotation I'd recommend it uh, like a rotation of five uh, and to increase scale to like 90% I think that's how you know nope, it's 110 uh, so just enlarging it a bit uh, just to make sure that there is no clipping and once you've done that just go ahead and easy ease all of these keyframes and it'll look something like this uh, all right, obviously if it is a bit too quick, you can go ahead and just extend those just like that. And you know, you can extend it forever, what you want really just until it looks good. Uh, I think that looks decent and yeah, if we just go ahead and rewind, we have these, uh, you can play around with the assistance as well. We can easy ease out. I'm pretty sure that's what we already had. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, I'm going to move on to the premiere part of the tutorial, but if you are on After Effects, thank you so, so much for watching. All right, we are now moving on to the final platform of today's tutorial, which is going to be Premiere Pro. Uh, I have already imported my clip right here, as you can see. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Uh, I've actually imported the wrong clip, so I'm going to go ahead and, and import the right one very, very quickly. Uh, just like that. I am not sure what the fuck happened, uh, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be, uh, it'll be just fine. All right. It'll be, it'll be just fine. Uh, so for this first one right here, uh, let's just go ahead and trim it down a bit. Uh, hopefully you've already done this. Uh, but yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and, uh, just go ahead and trim it down like that. Uh, we're now going to go to our effects panel and search for Twixter Pro. I'm going to go ahead and drag this on to my clip right here. And what I'm going to do is just go to where the character stops zooming out, which is going to be right here. And uh, I'm now going to just uh, correct some of these, uh, these, uh, uh, these settings that I have quite bad. And we go to, uh, we, we keyframe it right there when it stops zooming out. And we go to uh, when the shot hits the character and we set it to 10. Uh, what we are then going to do is just keep going forward uh, for a bit. I'd say roughly like here. Add a new keyframe. Go five frames forward. So one, two, three, four, five. And drag the speed percentage up uh, until it hits the target. Uh, if it's under 300, if the speed percentage is under 300, I would recommend just shoot bumping it up because uh, otherwise the impact will be extremely weak and it'll look a bit bad. Uh, so just go two frames forward, set it to 50, and you'll have your wonderful uh, impact right there. So uh, what we're now going to do is just go into our effects and... Uh, Actually, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to import uh, our second clip. It's going to be right here. Uh, and we're going to try and just sort of... Uh, we're going to put this up. Uh, we're going to drag that up to the second track. I'm going to drag that below. Uh, and we're going to just extend that by a bit. And we're going to make sure that these overlap. So that this is uh, above the second clip. 
we're going to make it sort of like that. So let's go to where they first overlap. We're going to click on this first one and we're going to keyframe uh, position, uh, rotation and scale. And we're then going to go to the last frame or the second to last frame. And we are going to drag the position down uh, just like that. And uh, just a bit further, actually, than you really need to. We're going to increase the scale to 105. And we are going to uh, increase the rotation to 5 or negative 5, uh, which is depending on what you want. But as you can see, if we do that, it'll do, uh, you know, it'll, it'll look pretty good. Uh, now just select all your keyframes in this little window right here. Right click and uh, uh, just easy ease these. Uh, I guess we easy ease in. I think that's the one we want to select. Uh, if not, easy ease out. Just use that, I guess. Uh, you can also increase how long you want this to last by, uh, you know, increasing the length of this top track and dragging these keyframes in or out. Uh, so, yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to add an impact to uh, this clip right here. Uh, but I do not have any uh, presets on Premiere because I mainly use this for subtitles on my videos uh, when I need to. Uh, and I don't actually have any real presets. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in a couple days and peace. Oh.